it's time to appear before the Supreme Bakugan Council. And Vylock appears, and he's a dick! I am Haru Ren, welcome to my review of episode 9 of Geogon Rising. So, spoiler warning, if you haven't seen this episode yet, go back and watch it now. But if you have, sit back, relax, and enjoy my review of Geogon Rising, episode 9. The first part is Supreme Council Calculations. We continue from the previous episode where Winton, Shun, Leah, Lightning, and Ajit arrive on Vestroya and are greeted oh so graciously by Spartillion. And oh crap, we get straight into the action like right away. This is going to be quite awesome and you guys suck. Seriously, Pensator, you're a golden Bakugan. This whole scene with Bakugan Stan I think could have been cut down to put them in separate frames of the screen because this seems like it was dragged on for the sake of length. Before Spartillion can one-shot Frascal and Fennica, Drago appears and stops the fight, revealing he has fully recovered his energy and was taken to Vestroya to appear before the Supreme Bakugan Council. Which turns out I was right that it's made up of Golden Bakugan that Pyravian, Gorin, Trino, and Tico are a part of from the first season. But then we get introduced to Villak, voiced by Martin Roach. And if you guys didn't know, the Teletoon summary already spoiled that Villak is the main bad guy for this season. No, baby steps now, people. Philok's design, quite honestly, looks like King Ghidorah, but without wings. Looking at scenes with the sides of his body showing, Philok looks like single-headed Hydronoid, but with two more heads strapped on the sides. It's not a terrible design, I quite like it actually, but while the center head seems animated to do all the talking, the other two just don't have character or purpose. I would have preferred it if the other two heads have a separate personality to make Velik more interesting and better to watch. I do think Martin Roach has an extreme level of talent. He was Colonel Tripp in the series and he has been in many other projects including Assassin's Creed Origins. But hearing him talk as Velik, it seems like Velik already has multiple personalities. He's calm and well-mannered but he's bitter and dismissive. Not accepting the opinions of Dan and Drago despite Drago having the most experience with humans and saving Vestroya on Earth twice in a row, he can also be intrigued and fairly passive observant. You pretty much have Ghidorah just right there. But despite that, I do think Villak as a character is still fairly decent. What are humans doing here? I don't think that's appropriate. Ah, so it was you. Very well then. Now a human has called them back with little concern for the consequences. It is the duty of the Supreme Council to protect all Bakugan kind from evil humans. So while the council has a debate, Villak proposes separating Earth and Vestroya for good so humans can't abuse the Bakugan powers anymore. But Drago has a lawyer moment saying that humans and Bakugan bonds have the potential to create a new world where they can coexist. You know, what I like is that it's very hard to argue against Villak's reasons. We've seen over the course of the series there are humans that will abuse Bakugan powers for their own benefit, and now it's all coming back to bite them in the ass. Even Gorin agrees to the decision because of what Shun's dad did to him. Though, when talking about the recent situation with Gregorius Reed and the result of it was the Geogons, they're speaking as if Geogons pose a legitimate threat to the planet or something. Now a human has called them back with little concern for the consequences. What consequence is there? Are they going to blow up Vestroya? What are they going to cause? Why is it bad they have returned? Are they rebels or something? You bring up this problem, but you don't explain how, so why should I care? So far, all they've proven to be are genies. What do you wish of us? What do you wish of me? Huh? What do you wish of me? I really think you could have trimmed down the Bakugan stand sequence at the beginning to explain this further. Not only could you have given us a little bit more background to the Geogons, but also establish what risks there are to having them back. But all we got was this. In ancient days, the Geogon flourished alongside Bakugan, but the situation changed and the Geogon chose to remove themselves from Vestroya. And this. The return of the Geogon is not to be taken lightly. This is serious. That doesn't tell us anything. But despite Villak's reasonings, I don't think that it's very fair of him to come to that conclusion. A fellow Bakugan nearly destroyed Vestroya in Season 1, Season 2 was because of an alien, and now that a human has entered Vestroya and stole a core, it's become a problem now? Villak really seems like he's not only uninformed, arrogant, and dismissive, but also seems like he's hypocritical. And dare I say, slightly racist. Silence, humans. You're your words hold no weight here. We do not need their input. This is solely a Bakugan concern. They've captured innocent Bakugan, controlled them, and used them for their own selfish purposes. Such arrogance, such wickedness! 
Though, considering the obvious direction that they're going with here, I think it's fair to say that this was extremely intentional. But Pyravian brings up that the council is incomplete because there is no fourth member, since I can only assume Tico was expelled from the council because of the V-Virus incident. Can't really blame them. The seat Tico once held remains empty. That's because we never found another Bakugan who's fit to join this council. Uh, what about Trino? This is another thing that I've been questioning. Did Valak replace Trino as part of the council or something? The last time we saw Trino, he was perfectly fine, and season one said that he is part of the council, so my only logical conclusion is that something must have happened and Valak replaced him. In which case, why didn't they have him take Tico's seat since it was vacant? So Pyravian nominates that Drago join the council, I guess any generic Bakugan could join the council then. And we continue with Drago's challenge where Drago accepts the position so that the vote to separate Earth and Vestroya will be deadlocked. But to be able to join the council, Drago must win a battle to pass the test. Typical. Please remember to remain calm and be a second set of eyes for Dragonoid. You mean do exactly what they've been doing the entire series? This part could have been cut out because there was no purpose to it. All Dan did was find a Bakukor and that was it. Nothing that he hasn't been doing the past two seasons. Drago has to fight three Oratoas to become a member of the council. The battle itself was pretty good because not only was their story driving the battle forward, but the Oratoa presented a big challenge for Drago in the same level that Spartillion did. Though, I would argue Spartillion is still better. Even though Drago manages to beat one, the Oratoa were actually observing Drago's fighting and figuring out how to counter him. When it seems like Drago is about to lose, Dan summons Arcleon, and you know what, I expected the council to have a much more surprised reaction, especially since Gorin and Velux seem to have made such a big deal about them before. Arcleon defeats another Oratoa, even though Dan set to defeat both of them, but Dan finds a Bakukor and Drago shoots the last one with a surprise chest beam to win. Not going to lie, I half expected Magnus to jump in at the last second, but thank god he didn't. So, that was episode 9 of Geogon Rising. Let me know what your rating of the show was in the comments down below. This was actually a really good episode, probably one of the best I've seen this season. We get introduced to Villak and already he's getting straight to the point and becomes very interesting. The first part of the episode was really a heavy debate and established already the consequence of the season bringing together the aftermath of the bad stuff from the series so far. It's extremely hard to argue against Villak's reasonings because we've experienced it for ourselves, we see there are people who misuse Bakugan for their own selfish needs, they practically spent the first part debating and arguing over what to do, only having a small bit of action at the beginning that fits in pretty well. All the political talk about the consequence of humans using Bakugan, the return of Jigan saving Bakugan from human control but humans and Bakugan can do more good, is like the Senate talks from the Star Wars prequel series. Or the tech limbo from Iron Man before getting to Iron Man. Kids like to be treated like they're adults and getting past all the debating and grown up stuff to get to the action was what I've come to appreciate about the Star Wars prequels and surprisingly it's done here in Bakugan. And the action was pretty engaging, fighting three golden Bakugan at once to prove you're worthy and making sure Bakugan and humans don't get separated is pretty much what makes Drago so heroic. I've rambled on about how Villak is good but could be better but honestly even though you have him like this I can't can't complain. He's still very good and there are definitely some dents in his armor that is foreshadowing his antagonism. His ideals and reasonings are relatable, like Killmonger from Black Panther. It's hard to argue against it, but you know it's still wrong. This episode was written pretty well with only a few small things. I'm still wondering like where Trino is or how the Geogons pose a threat to Bakugan. But those are just small and trying to be as honest as possible, it didn't distract me all that much from what the episode was trying to do and that is just starting to set everything up for the story ahead. The background settings was pretty cool actually, the action and animation was smooth, and Martin Roach puts on a damn good performance as Villuk, and I'm interested in next week's episode. So for this episode, I'm giving it a Bakutastic. This was genuinely a really good episode, probably in my top 5. Can't believe it! Thank you for watching this review of Geogon Rising. Be sure to press the thumbs up and give us a subscribe for more awesome Bakugan content. I've been Haru Ren, and thank God for Rapid Fire. Bye!